Welcome back to the lecture series for an introduction to counterengineering. As a reminder, counterengineering is a discipline concerned with engineering almost impossible visions, ones that will take longer than your lifetime to achieve. For that reason, today I'm going to tell you how to send your mind forward in time past your death. Of course, I'm not speaking of your corporal experiencing mind. When your body goes, your experience itself goes with it. What I'm talking about is what you contain in your mind. You have beliefs, values, hopes, ideas that you hold as important. You came to these ideas through your unique experiences. Your conception of a coffee mug is fundamentally not equivalent to my conception of a coffee mug. Each of us have had our own unique interactions with mugs made for coffee. Clearly there is some sort of shared experience that enables us to communicate about coffee mugs, but fundamentally they're, they're different. And interestingly, even coffee itself starts as an idea. It's not that some guy looks at the coffee plant and thinks, ah, I can make an espresso out of this. Rather, the idea is, what if I eat this? Then, okay, what if I roast it first? And so, uh, maybe I should grind this to make it palatable. And finally, oh crap, I just spilled it into my pot of boiling water. Oh, well, probably went a little differently than that. The point is this. The seed of the coffee plant had the potential to be roasted, ground, and brewed prior to any human involvement. Humans did not create this potential, it was already there. But to find it, we had to make a guess that something might be looking, lurking in the shadows behind what we know. Our ancestors discovered and actualized coffee through their ideas. So the people who had their ideas about coffee before coffee was coffee are represented right here in this mug. This mug does not exist without the intervention of those specific people, nor does it exist without the person who glazed the mug, the trucker who transported it, me who is waving it around in your face. We all participate in what this mug is. It's absolutely incredible how many minds are packed in here. And you remember, holy crap, that's true of all these other human artifacts around me. We're beset by minds at every turn. Let's take this further. If these human artifacts contain human minds, do human minds contain human minds? To me, the answer is, of course. And once again, not their literal experiencing mind, but what that mind communicated through its words and deeds. Think of how much you've learned from your family, your friends, your teachers, who you are is not this completely singular self. Your mind contains other people's ideas. When you read books by dead authors, their mind is reaching out past death and becoming a part of yours. Now, for a hedonist, this doesn't matter. Now all I care about is their experiencing mind and no more. But for a counter-engineer, this is the skeleton key. Here is how you make real the vision you won't experience. You must pass it on to other minds. The architects of medieval cathedrals knew they would not live to see their vision complete, but they worked all the same, knowing their descendants would live to see and appreciate it. Today, we too see the beauty that their mind passed beyond death. So, in order that your mind should persist past death in this manner, you must communicate your vision. Now, it's of course very easy to talk about things that already exist. We can talk about the latest line of simulacra AIs as our, everyone knows them. On the other hand, your vision does not exist, and you do not yet know how to get there. This means we have to engage in a bit of light subterfuge. We can't write a scientific paper on our vision, but we can write science fiction. In doing so, we can highlight the bits that we believe or know and insert playful narrative elsewhere. Now, what you can't do is pretend to be a professor giving lectures tenure in the future. That's my thing, you gotta do something different. Now, there is a major problem here. When our experiencing mind goes, so goes our control. Uh, when we are alive, we may not only assert what we believe, we may clarify and expand in response to challenges we may communicate. When we're gone, we can't prevent those silly humanities professors from taking what we said and twisting it into what they want to say. Worse, it's possible to so twist ideas that the original idea is completely obliterated in the process. How can we possibly guarantee that what we meant to say actually remains? Well, and there's actually a simple answer to this. What you say must in some way be true. 
even though you can't empirically falsify that. In the long run, truth wins out. Truth may be perverted and twisted, but it may never be destroyed. It will reform itself over time. True potentials are always rediscovered and reactualized. A simple answer, but also a heavy burden. In order to make a true prediction, your vision must be grounded in other truths. You must continually be in the process of finding relevant truths that refine and reinforce your vision. A simple demarcation of your idea is not at all enough. You must pass on everything you and your minds know. Until next month, dream of what you will pass beyond death.